Okay, I'm gonna try to tie in two catastrophes or two scenarios that happened to hopefully give you an idea of what not to do when living off grid. So as you know, I fill an IBC tank every day that it's mostly sunny with the well. Now the well is tied into the solar panels. So there's a 275 gallon IBC tank in here with an RV pump. And the RV pump takes the water from the IBC tank, pumps it into the house through an on-demand water heater that requires about 30 PSI of pressure, which the RV pump supplies. The RV pump is powered by 12 volt battery. It's actually a lawnmower battery long complicated story how that is tied up but I have the little trickle charger on it I plug it into the wall and the solar panels power the trickle charger yeah I know that I'm taking DC to AC back to DC but it was a lot better than having to run a long wire up here that's the thought process behind that the RV pump is six amps now I come over here and I got my well and I kind of going backwards I run the water through two filters. The filters are just sediment filters and a charcoal filter, just in case anything happens. It doesn't contaminate the IBC tank. And then I have this old antique well that is about 100 feet deep. I've had all kinds of issues with this thing, but it's running fairly perfectly now. It's a fine balance, but it's, it's running perfectly very clean water coming out of it and this like I said is tied into the solar panels so you can see that I got a light switch here which runs down to the inverter and so each day I come out I turn on the inverter I walk down there turn on the inverter it gives me a little bit of exercise it's 100 feet down there 100 feet back up the hill I come up here turn on the switch water shoots out I let it run for a couple seconds into this bucket to make sure the water is clean in case something has messed up. Now I've told you in the past this well used to get dirty all the time. Groundwater, surface water would go down in there and get it dirty. Another thing that can happen is this pipe or the well pump falls down. It's on this rope here and the rope stretches. Now a lot of people tell me that what I need to do is put a clamp around the pipe that way the pipe can't fall down. The problem with that is you're not supposed to put any weight on the pipe. That's why you have a rope. The rope holds the weight. Remember, you got joints down there, connections. And if you had, you know, 200 pounds of weight on that, those connections could break apart. And then you got a pump just hanging there. So you put it on a rope. If the rope were ever to break, then the backup is the the pipe. And then if something happened there, the last thing you got is the wire now the problem with the wire is it's just screwed into the light switch so you want it on the rope but like i said the rope can stretch so that makes this pipe fall back and when it falls back it gets into the sediment of the well into the bottom of the well and starts to bring up dirt again it's an old antique well and it has filled in a lot over the last 50 60 years so I just try to maintain it the best I can and deal with it, work with it, and I've got it. So if I can just get this thing the last 20, 25 years until I die, I'll be happy. So I come out every day, turn on the inverter, like I said, turn on the switch, let the water run into this bucket, then I switch it over and I fill the IBC tank up with the hose. It really is not a complicated system. The other thing is, is when I go down there after I shut it all down I can go down to the solar panels and I can check to make sure that the, the solar panels are charging correctly it's a lot better than it used to be before I had one inverter and I never went down and looked them of course it would never have ran anything like this not back then and so about every six months I would notice that I'm starting to lose some charging it's not charging quite as good but I didn't go down every day and look at it. It was like every six months I go down and look at it and like, huh, there's something wrong. So then I would spend an entire day or two going through the entire system, figuring out what has failed. Maybe a raccoon walked through it, knocked a wire loose or 
a wires broke or got corroded, just all kinds of things would happen over those six months. Well, I go down every day and I shut off the well and I can see between the two inverters, and I got two inverters, if I got a problem. After I shut off the well, I should be running close to 25 to 30 amps on both inverters. I keep saying inverters, charge, I mean charge controllers. So the charge controller uh, on one, uh, six of the panels go to one charge controller, six of the panels go to the other charge controller. And so they both should read 25 to 30 amps. And they should both be equal. If they're, one's 25, the other one should be 25. If one's 30, the other one should be 30. Well, the other day I noticed one was at 30 and the other was at 25. Now, that could have been nothing. Maybe the panel was shaded or, you know, something happened, cloud was over. Could have been anything. But it did make me go out and look immediately. And I noticed that there was a wire. I mean, as soon as I walked out, I saw the wire was loose. Apparently a deer or a raccoon or something had run through and knocked the wire loose. So, instead of waiting six months and having to spend all day to repair this thing, I went out and was able to repair it in just a couple seconds. It was no big deal. So there's something to say to go out and check your systems frequently as a part of daily routine. There, I understand preventive maintenance. I was on a submarine. You'd go around and you do your preventive maintenance once a month, once a week, whatever it was, once a day. But when you're actually using the system and you're noticing, huh, what's that leak for? Why is that leaking? I saw that on the IBC tank a few years ago. Uh, the pipe going from the IBC tank to the pump had a leak. And I noticed that we were increasing over a couple days, I've noticed, two or three days, that we were using more water than normal. It didn't make sense. So I knew we had a leak. Got into it, opened it up, put a piece of cardboard underneath the, the hose, the pipe, and I, it was dripping on the cardboard. I always use cardboard because you can see the drip easier. So. If you're always observing your systems, you're more likely to catch problems before it becomes a real serious problem or a costly problem. It's like when you drive your car, you should listen to the car every time you get in it. Different noises, different feelings, different vibrations, and you should address them right away to see what it is. You take that to the mechanic, they're going to be searching around forever trying to figure it out because they didn't know how it drove before. Yeah, they can take it for a test drive, but that doesn't tell them anything. If I just felt something different. Same thing applies. So to get into a different subject, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to tie it all together. My water system is probably one of the systems that is complained about the most of all the things I do. For whatever reason, people just do not like this tank sitting here with an RV pump. They just don't like it. They don't like how I keep it warm. There's just nothing about it they like. They, they have better solutions. One of the solutions is put it up in the attic. Well, it's 2,000 pounds of water. Put it up in the attic, the attic isn't gonna hold. It's just not, he just can't do it. Put it up on the roof, let it heat up with the sun. Um, just all kinds of things. And I have this philosophy, it's called KISS, keep it simple, silly. It's actually stupid, but I say silly. Just keep it simple. And this is a very simplistic system. There's just not a lot to it. The RV pump is the most complex thing in it, and is actually, since it's the most complex, is it's the thing that fails the most. About once a year I have a problem with that pump. So, people always want to come up with a better solution. They cost more money, but I'm not even talking about money today, but it always costs more money. Whatever their solution is, it costs lots of money. But one of the things they want me to do is get this thing up in the air so I can get rid of the RV pump and water will gravity feed. If you get on Google, you can find out how high water has to be to get the amount of pressure that you need. So I need 30 pounds of pressure to, to operate that water heater. It won't kick on unless it's uh, 30 pounds. So I gotta have it 69 feet up near. I gotta have the water 69 feet up near. That means I gotta build a tower. Well, I'm not a welder. And if I was a welder, I don't have the electric to weld. I've said this before in previous videos. 
So I would have to build it out of something like six by sixes. 69 feet in the air. Can you imagine that? That's, let's just round it up to 70 feet. That's seven story building. This is, a, this is beyond my capabilities. I'm not an engineer by any stretch of imagination. Why would I want to take on a feet like that? I would have to cut footers you know, feet deep. I'd have to use six by sixes and bolt it all together and just cross my fingers that I've got it structurally sound enough that it will hold 2,000 pounds up in the air, 70 feet. It would be a guess. That's all it would be. I wouldn't have any mathematical experience or knowledge on, on what I need, how much a six by six can hold, how many braces I would need. It would just be a guess. And then you would have to constantly maintain it. You'd constantly be climbing up it, looking for structural integrity. Is anything broke? You'd be stressed out every time a windstorm came through. Is it gonna hold? Whereas this, I don't worry about it. Gets down to negative four, ah, you know what, better drain that RV pump, it might freeze. That's, that's the stress of the day, of the year that we have. I'm not a big fan of the idea of building a tower when a $19 pump is all I need. And 10 minutes a day to fill this thing. That's all I gotta have is 10 minutes a day. Now the other thing I would have to do in order to fill something that tall, I'd have to get a bigger pump, a well pump, because the well pump I have wouldn't go 200 feet up in the air. It's a 110 pump. It's designed for a 100 to 200 foot well. So you're trying to get this up 200 feet. And since I'm already downhill from the well, well, I'm uphill here, so I'm probably another 10 feet higher than the well is down there, maybe even 15 feet. So you know, you're just constantly adding distance to it, which is you're going to have to get a bigger pump, which means I need more solar panels. I need, I would probably need 12 more. I got 12 now, I need 12 more. Plus two new charge controllers, plus a ton more batteries, probably eight to 10 more batteries. So, I mean, the cost is just astronomical now, all that six by sixes. And then they say that you need to put a float valve in it. Well, the reason I come out and manually fill the tank is because I can only do it on sunny days, or at least partly sunny days, mostly sunny days. If it's filling, on a cloudy day, I'm going to get into my batteries and I'm going to run out of electricity, which now my meat's going to thaw out because I don't have any electricity. Of course, I can run it on a generator, but that's beside the point. So the, the idea is, is to automate everything. This is what people want me to do is automate everything so I don't have anything to do ever again. I can just sit around watching my fantastic engineering skills come together. And just sit in my computer and do nothing all day. What a dream. Okay, so I just watched a video of a guy who has a water tower. So I want to prove my point. He, it was a short video, one of those YouTube shorts. So I went to his channel, check it out. He's been doing this for four years. And I guess that tower is about four years old. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against this guy, but I could have predicted this is what was going to happen. I could almost nail the exact problem he had, which is what happened. But he shows this short video, YouTube short video. After four years, his tower crashed, fell to the ground. It was holding 4,000 pounds up near. It didn't look that tall. I would say maybe 20, 30 feet tall. It wasn't huge, but I need 69 to 70 feet. So what happened was, is he had footers. Just like I said, I would have to build footers with concrete. And he put you sandbags. I'm not really sure I understand his, his entire system, but it doesn't matter. What happened was his automated system, his float valve, that fills it automatically, got stuck open. So it was just pouring water through it. It never stopped. And it washed away one of these footers. And it fell over. My point to the beginning of this video is, is I come out and I check my systems every day. By necessity. It's not that I want to. It's not that, oh, I'm such a disciplined person. I come out and check everything, make sure everything's working all the time. Nope, it's because I have to. I go down, I look at the charge controllers, and one's reading differently than the other one. I come over here and I notice, wow, we're using a little bit more water than normal. What's going on? 
But when you get complacent and your float valve sticks and it knocks over your, I don't know how much that would cost. Let's just call it $2,000. It knocks over your $2,000 tower and you got to rebuild it. Was it that much effort to come out here 10 minutes a day to stick a hose in the IBC tank to fill it up every day? Is it really that hard that you can't just come outside and fill it up? Instead, he's going to spend the next several weeks and several thousand dollars, I'm guessing on the price and the time frame, repairing his tower. I don't know. I, I think putting your hands on it every day is a much better solution. So if you'll click this up next box, it'll take you to a video where I was talking about what to do in case of a tornado. So I hope I can inspire you. Put your hands on everything every day so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.